what happens to free speech when the union government gets to decide what content stays or doesn't stay online? Well, we're about to find out, since the executive-appointed Grievance Appellate Committees just became functional. On 1st March 2023, three Grievance Appellate Committees, GACs, became functional. These committees have been constituted under the Notified IT Amendment Rules 2022 by the Union Government to address complaints against the decisions of all kinds of intermediaries, including social media platforms, to remove or not remove content. What this basically means is that if any user is dissatisfied with the action taken by the GRO in response to a grievance, a user can appeal against this decision to the GACs. The appeals will be filed on a virtual digital platform and the entire process till the decision on the appeal will be conducted there. The biggest concern with the formation of such committees is that the committees have been constituted by the union government. This process will effectively empower the state to be the arbiter of permissible speech on the internet. This can possibly also incentivize social media platforms and other intermediaries to suppress any speech which the government may not like. Now, here are five questions about the GAC that are worth asking to secure user rights and protect online freedom of speech. Question 1. Do the committees have the competence and capacity to resolve the high volume of appeals within a constricted time frame? Under Rule 3A, Subrule 4 of the IT Amendment Rules, the GAC is required to resolve user appeals within 30 calendar days from the date of receipt of the appeal. The data shows that in the period between October and December 2022, the number of decisions taken by certain significant social media intermediaries in response to user appeals or proactive actions was so large that if even 1% reached the GACs, they'd have to deal with tens of thousands of appeals per month. Moreover, these numbers do not account for the appeals on which no action was taken, and hence the total number of appeals may be even larger. Question 2. What are project management units? And who will be appointed to them? What will their qualifications and responsibilities be? Reportedly, anticipating the large number of complaints, each three-member GAC will have two additional people appointed in the form of project management units, PMUs. What is concerning is that while the IT Amendment Rules 2022 had already elaborated upon the three-member composition of the GAC, it had made no mention of the PMU. Thus, questions about the basis and criteria for appointing these members, its composition, its roles and responsibilities all remain unanswered. Question 3. How will the GAC prioritize among user appeals? It has also been reported that the PMU will evaluate and prioritize the appeals for the other GAC members to look into. This will follow a discussion and eventually a final verdict on the issue. Reports have also shared that segregation of cases among the three committees will be done automatically. Thus, it remains unclear what the process of segregation and what the criteria of prioritization will be. Question 4. Can only a directly aggrieved person raise an appeal against the decision of an intermediary? While Rule 3A Subrule 3 allows any person aggrieved by a decision of the GRO to appeal to the GAC against it, what remains unclear is whether the person aggrieved has to be the user who originally raised the grievance or if any person, whether directly or not directly aggrieved by the decision, can raise such an appeal. Question 5. What will be the process of periodic reviews of the GACs and will the GACs' decisions be reasoned and justified? A press release by Mighty also states that periodic reviews of GACs and reporting and disclosure of GAC orders will also be part of the process. While this move towards transparency and accountability is appreciable, we believe that more information around the process of these periodic reviews, who will be conducting them, their frequency, and their reasoning or justification of the review must also be made publicly available. The Internet Freedom Foundation's consistent ask has been to take back the IT Rules 2021 and any of its subsequent amendments. The government should also reveal the underlying intent with respect to intermediary liability and online content regulation before introducing any new amendments or replacements through white papers and discussion papers. For our in-depth analysis of this issue, head to our website and read our blog post. To support our work, donate to IFF and to join the conversation, join our Telegram community. And in case someone reports this and it ends up in front of the GAC somehow, hi, we see you.